Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hello, my name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com. In this series of do-it-yourself study kit for Cisco CMS deployment, we're going to talk about the call flow. Now, as you uh, were aware that uh, when we deploy the CMS, we can we can deploy either single combine or we can deploy as a split uh, configuration. So this is an example of a single combine where all the components that are currently logged in to uh, a single server. So depending on um, how things are configured, for example, if you have all the components running on the same server, you'll see the web admin, which will communicate with the call bridge, the web bridge, which will communicate with also the call bridge, so as the XMPP server and the database server as well. So the communication internally, that everybody is communicating with the call bridge and call bridge is in return communicating with the database. Now, from a client perspective, you have WebRTC. Now, WebRTC will communicate using the web bridge where, uh, for signaling purposes. And once the media has been established, the WebRTC client will communicate with the call bridge directly. Same thing with Cisco meeting server application. Now, when a user is authenticated, the call bridge will communicate with the LDAP server for authenticating the end user. Cisco meeting app, which is an application which is based on XMPP uh, protocol. The messages between the Cisco meeting app and Cisco meeting server for sign in are based on uh, the XMPP protocol, uh, which is a standard industry standard. Now, if you take a look at a Cisco meeting uh, server sign in process from a client perspective, you're going to, of course, uh, enter your username as the domain name and your client will contact your DNS server for a DNS SRV record for the, based on the domain name of the user ID. The DNS server will then provide the address of the XMPP server and your client will then send a message directly to the XMPP server. XMPP server, which is right here, will then contact or send authentication uh, details to the call bridge, is step number four. Step five, the call bridge will look up the database to see if the user even exists. And if it does exist, it will then communicate with, uh, once the database confirmed that user is in the database, the call bridge will then contact the LDAP server for authenticating. LDAP server will respond with the confirmation that yes, the user credentials are correct. And in that case, the authentication server will return to the XMPP with a, a, a policy.